Hello, everybody. We are back for our uh, post E3 discussion today here on the Nintendo Pipeline podcast. I am CMM, and with me is One Up Muffin, but you can call me Jared. And Mina. All right. So uh, E3 has come and gone. Uh, Nintendo went last as always, making it torturous for all of us. Yeah. Um, so. Before we get into the Nintendo stuff, though, I just wanted to touch upon um, what everyone, you know, a few things that everyone thought of some of the other E3 stuff that was shown. Um, you know, we had everyone from Ubisoft to Microsoft to Bamco and Square, a lot of games shown, tons of indie stuff. So I guess we'll start with you, one up. What were a couple of non Nintendo games that you were interested in this E3? Uh, yeah, so the ones I wanted to highlight were first, the Halo Infinite multiplayer um, footage. We saw that for the first time. I am a... Halo is one of my top non-Nintendo franchises. This one was really impressive for having a good mix of features from 5, like the most, like the sprinting and the clambering, and also some cool stuff from 3, like the equipment. And also bringing back the really cool big team battle maps, a lot of vehicles, a lot of players. Seems like a lot of fun, and it's free to play, which is wild. That's yeah, the that big one, cool. right? Like we've known yeah. about that's free to play, but it's just it's so cool to like. You know, I think this is the first time people are really taking notice of that, and I'm I'm excited too. Like it looks great, and it, it this is gonna have the biggest user base Halo's ever had, right? Because yeah, which it's, is, yeah, it, it's free wild because it, you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xbox Gold doesn't have a paywall anymore, and it's on Steam, right? So it's just like, yep, everything uh, is yeah. set for this to be huge. Yeah, this will be massive, and it's amazing that like I, I kind of expected multiplayer games would start to go free, but we're seeing it now with Warzone, we're seeing it with Halo. I think we'll start seeing more AAA multiplayers go free in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if like in five years Battlefield was free. Oh sure, yeah. So. In terms of, like, distribution, did they say, like, does it come on the infinite disc, or is it, like, you just download it for free? Or... I'm gonna guess it's I bet a free to play game. I bet it's a separate download. Yeah, because yeah. we know they're just separate installs, like, when you buy it visually. So, Which like, is good. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that is good. Because um, Warzone is, I don't know if it's yeah. still true, but you had to download... Modern Warfare. Warfare to play Warzone, which is yeah. ridiculous. And that game is humongous. Yeah, yeah, it was something like on Xbox. If you wanted to just have Warzone, like you had to install everything first, and then you could uninstall stuff after or something, something weird like that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'm super down if they just you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be kind of neat. Okay, Sorry, okay. it would be kind of neat if like maybe if you buy actual Halo Infinite, like it comes with a code with like some like cosmetics or something for yeah i would i would i would bet they give some cosmetic stuff with that and for probably game pass ultimate members but yeah free and halo it looks great it looks good like it genuinely looks good like i'm excited for the multiplayer i'm super down and then my my second is riders republic this was at the ubisoft show this is kind of a spiritual successor to steep yeah which was a snow extreme sports game and this one has some of the snow stuff as well as uh bikes bikes are the big thing in this one so mountain bikes wingsuits wingsuits skiing snowboarding uh you're in a huge open world with tons of players they showed at least like 64 player races yeah and it just looks like a it looks like a blast yeah, well, it's, it's neat because it's, like, kind of impromptu racing as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? Like, you kind of just dive in and, like, all right, we're racing now. Is that? Yeah, I guess I don't know how that how impromptu it would be in practice, but that's that's the goal, at least. And, like, Steep was pretty good at making, like, uh, entering matches seem seamless. Which is, it's a shame that game didn't come to Switch. It was supposed to originally. Yeah, that is a shame. Uh, is And if I remember correctly, Riders Republic, can you kind of just, is that... I forget exactly, but like, if I remember correctly, you like you kind of see the map, and then you can kind of just like, basically like click on a chunk of it and just go there. Is that how that works? Like you just in pinpoint st- a spot. I'm not sure how it works in this one, but in Steep, you had a lot of choices of where you could drop to. You can like airdrop into places in Steep, so I yeah. would assume there's something similar here. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. 
But yeah, um, I love and, extreme sports games, so I'm definitely into this. Yeah, and the first person biking thing was very striking too mm-hmm. during the uh, presentation. Yeah, that was like, if you have motion sickness, do not, <laughs> yeah. do not. <laughs> yeah, like three D trials a little bit there. It kind of looks yeah. like the all game for vehicles, like <laughs> you know what I mean, like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, which was kind of like what the crew was, and like the crew was not great. So hopefully this this oh. feels better than that one. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So uh, speaking of that, uh, Mina, you have yeah. a couple of picks as well. I do, I do. Uh, so uh, I guess to go off of sports, uh, I picked Forza Horizon Five. That's one of mine. Uh, that was at the Xbox conference, coming to Xbox, obviously, uh, and PC, but. Uh, they just had a really good showing, you know? Like, we didn't even know this game existed. And and, and in fact, we knew Forza Motorsport was coming. So I think if you weren't, like, kind of paying attention to rumors, I think a lot of people weren't even, not even expecting Forza Horizon to show up, you know? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, this would have been the off year of the show. It would have been, yeah. And But, you know, Forza Horizon 5 just shows up out of nowhere, looks incredible, is out in a couple of months, you know, which you always love when a game... You don't even know exists is out in a few months, right? It's out in November, oh, yeah. right? Um, and, and so, and, and then they just showed they cl- they basically closed the conference with it, like it was before the one more thing, right? And yeah. then they just showed yeah. a really extended look at the gameplay, and it just looked great, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Some I'm of the shots were stoked. photorealistic. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I mean, you can t- like this looks like a next gen game, even if it's a cross gen game, it looks like a next gen game. You know, yeah, it's gonna I be don't... sixty FPS ray tracing all the I, all the yeah. all the bells and whistles. I, yeah, I don't generally like care too much about like photorealism or you know how something looks to that degree, but there was no mistaking that looked really nice, and and the location is great. I'm, oh, I'm the so location, I yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the it lo- takes place in Mexico, in Mexico, and you know it it it. it Here's the thing, it's like, I mean, this is obvious, right? But, like, you know, it just looks completely different for, from Forza Horizon 4 because it's in a different setting, right? Because that was set in the yeah. UK, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But, like, this is just, it. everything, the whole, nothing looks the same, you know? Um, yeah. And, and, I'm, and I don't like racing games or car games. I don't like cars, you know? But yeah. <laughs> that is a testament <laughs> to Forza Horizon because I played it. I would have never played it if it wasn't on Game Pass, right? But I played FH4 mm-hmm. on Game Pass, Same. and I just fell in love with it, you know? It is one of the best open-world games, period. Honestly. Right? And I so just, already, yeah. I, I was excited to play this one. But, you know, like, again, this is someone who hates cars, you know? But I I love yeah. this series now. I'm a big fan. I'm here day one. It comes to Game Pass, so of course I'm there day one, right? Yeah, day one. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't care about cars at all either, but I do like the idea of kind of just driving out you know around an open area that has like landmarks and is like memorable you know mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. kind of it it's kind i it's a, this is a weird comparison a little bit but it's sort of like outrun where you're kind of just cruising um not like outrun but you know what i mean it has that, that like fe- that specific feeling yeah i get I'm referring I'm, to. for sure yeah just driving um, around the world is great and yeah even though it's more on the realistic side it doesn't feel like a sim racer no it yeah. still feels very accessible to anyone for sure yeah. it does it um yeah there's that and then they also showed that uh little like stadium thing like oh the yeah, you, yeah like, you, you can kind of like make your own little challenge things right um i forgot about yeah. that that's cool that's yeah. like forge mode from halo where you can build your own maps and stuff yeah i really dug that like arcadey experience too so i yeah, have still i'm just super fun. stoked you know mm-hmm. uh yeah and then, oh yeah and then my other one is not technically at e3 but this is how we kind of started quote-unquote e3 week right yeah uh and that was elden ring closed the show at jeff Keighley's summer game fest and uh lord have mercy this trailer was phenomenal <laughs> you know like, I, I think this is my game of the show. I think for a lot of people it is, because I, this trailer just did... I, I mean, like, I think a lot of people were kind of down on Elden Ring before. It's not down, but they were just... They, everyone was excited, everyone wanted to see it, but we were just kind of accepted, oh, man, who knows when it comes out, right? And to some it, people... It was it almost, tre- trepid expectations. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and to some people, it almost started to feel like vaporware, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then they just come back out of nowhere... 
Um, the game looks incredible. It's out in January. They show, and, and that trailer, it showed a real ass video game, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> so much variety in there. Um, I am so excited. I, I, I haven't played too many FromSoft games. I played Sekiro, fell in love with it. I played Demon Souls, really liked it as well. I'm, I'm probably gonna, I, I'm feeling the FromSoft hype now, so I'm like, I'm gonna go play Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> you gotta play Dark Souls 3. Yeah. That one's awesome. Yeah, but oh my goodness, I, I, Open world from game, okay, I'm, I'm in. You know, let's go. Yeah, it looks it looks fantastic. I loved the variety of the enemies. I think the horse can double jump. Huh. <laughs> There's just, like you said, a huge amount of variety. Everything looks great. It was a chonky trailer with so much in it, and I was that, so. Impressed. This is how you do a gameplay trailer. You know, mm-hmm. like like yeah. my goodness. It's yeah, so it was good. um, it was a good reveal. Um, I'm personally not into like the Souls and like FromSoft stuff, but the game I thought I, I saw some people saying like, "Oh, it doesn't look that nice." I thought it looked really, really nice. Oh my god, it's good. strike like FromSoftware's art direction is just on top of the world, right? Like, mm-hmm. even yeah. if you don't care for FromSoft games, I cannot, I don't believe there's there's people out there who cannot appreciate just that yeah. beautiful art. You know? Yeah, it's good. It's so good. I, I honestly don't want them to, like, go to higher graphical fidelity, because, like, their stuff looks great, and I don't want it to take longer. Yeah, like, I don't, like, yeah. I, to me, that looked like a next-gen game. Like, sure, maybe, I'm sure if you, mm-hmm. like, dug deep into it, like, you could find some technical flaws in it, but, I to me, I think their art direction does a really good job of masking yeah, quote-unquote it, flaws, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it just looks yeah. great. If, I if, wanted to uh, say to um, Clay, I thought you would like these kind of games because they're very, um, they're very old school. Yeah, yeah. They are. It's it's mostly um, I just can never get into the combat and the feel. Mm. Like it's just gotcha. I I think heavy is the word that I would use. Yeah. I've heard I've heard Sekiro is different. Oh, um, Sekiro is very so might, different. Yeah. I I might give that one a shot, but yeah, not my thing, unfortunately. I but will unless you're say... that. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, like I. I will say, it took me, like, a minute to get... Like, I, I tried multiple times, but when it clicks, it clicks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like so, It took me yeah. three games. It, it, I had it, to try same. Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, and then finally Dark Souls 3 was the one that did it for me. Yeah, I don't have the patience. I'm yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I get that. But, um... The other thing is, yeah, I mean, like, honestly, unless you're that guy who, like, whined on Twitter about Ratchet and Clank's, uh, like, lack of footsteps or whatever it the, was. The rock. I, the rock and the, the plant or whatever. So this silly. game is very, very pretty. Um, and then I actually had a couple as well. <laughs> Mine are very different picks than what you guys had. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my first one is uh, Dodgeball Academia, which was an indie game that was shown off I believe at the beginning of the PC gaming show could be wrong on that, but it's pretty much a dodgeball RPG. Um, I think it was the future gaming show. Maybe it was future gaming show. It, yeah, I, it, I missed I missed it somewhere. Um, it, it was very reminiscent of like the Mario uh, RPG, Mario sports RPGs on GBA, right? Uh, um, in a way, so sort, kind sort of. of. So like it's um, first off, the art style is very gorgeous i I think the uh gumball is a pretty good comparison for for what it looks like visually um but the combat system yeah like you're you're playing you know you are playing dodgeball so it's an action combat system and it actually more reminded me a little bit of like mario and luigi in terms of like the battle screen oh sure yeah um so yeah it definitely has me intrigued i I love the idea of a dodgeball rpg um you know obviously you think of super dodgeball and like those games as well and i i'm sure some of that dna is, is in here too but it just looked very charming and, and interesting and the combat seemed to have decent variety like i saw something where like he like threw a dodgeball but then he like threw out a bunch more like it's it's definitely like you know wild dodgeball it's not like you know passing a ball back and forth or whatever um but yeah it looked it looked really cool and uh i there is a demo for it on steam right now um that i'm probably gonna try i haven't haven't gotten around to it yet oh yeah let us know how that is that seems it seems cool yeah i mean indies really rocked at this e3 in general i'll just mm-hmm. say that 
Um, and then the other game that I wanted to briefly touch upon uh, is a, uh, I can't even call it a cult classic. It's just, it's a thing that exists. And that is um, at the limited game, limited run games conference, uh, they announced, uh, and I found out afterwards that they actually bought this IP. They didn't just <laughs> announce that they're like doing a version of it. Like they own it now. Wow. Uh, and that is their one last thing was plumbers don't wear ties, which is an old like 3DO game that is infamous um, from years ago. It's basically a slideshow, um, <laughs> and it's very workplace harassment <laughs> like like the it's unhinged basically. It's like follows these people who are like coworkers, and you kind of like tell you like make story decisions basically. But uh-huh. it looks like a freaking PowerPoint, and it's so funny. Like, it's it's unintentionally, like, really funny. Um, and just, they're literally, like, remastering and, like, up some of the assets from this game is just the funniest thing to me. Um, I'm, I'm curious what it's going to be priced at, but, like, forever I've just wanted to play that stupid-ass game. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it before this, but I have not. Think, but you know, I think Giant I... Bomb did a video on it. Yeah, I think that's I... that's probably where I heard it from. I think I watched the Retsu Prey of it like years ago. I think that's what it was. It's so funny. Like it's bad. Like it's very bad. Like there's nothing good about this game. <laughs> just to be clear. Um, <laughs> but God, it's such a meme, and I just love the idea that someone actually like bought this IP and is bringing it back like why not you know why not I, yeah i yeah, love that you're back now I, I you know i really appreciate that you pick these type of games though because you know, you're, you're keeping you know now i'm gonna look out for this stuff you know i'm like mm, yeah mm. we'll definitely don't look <laughs> out for plumbers, we're picking the triple a <laughs> games you're over yeah. there repping repping the indies and yeah. the old old school slideshow games yeah 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 don't look at plumbers wear ties <laughs> don't wear ties too much but the other indie stuff is the <laughs> actual indie stuff is cool um so why are we really here we're really really here here? uh because we are gonna go through nintendo's direct and all those cool announcements uh pretty much from the beginning so uh, i guess let's get on with it um direct opened they kept us you know sitting there for a minute while they talked about how people play games and it's cool or whatever and then it was the fifth year of the switch Yes, it, we actually are very far along in that in the life cycle, though you wouldn't really know it based you on not know what it they all. showed. Um, they are not so, slowing down. And then and then the snap happened, and we got a trailer for a Smash character, and that character is Kazuya from Tekken. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will um, say, I was not, like, hyped for this, but I, it was just like, you know, this is deserved. You know, Tekken belongs in smash you know what i mean like it just it, yeah. it, it, it it is one of those things and you know i love seeing ryu terry ken and and now kazuya just all in the same game i think they're just really cool you know yeah, yeah. tekken is Absolutely. so important to the history of fighting games that it makes sense mm-hmm. and the trailer they showed was hilarious oh it's so funny yeah it was very so funny funny um yeah tekken you know um yeah, this is another. This is a pick that like I'm pretty neutral on in terms of like my own excitement about it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a great pick. Um, yeah. I'm glad that Namco gets another rep. I think Tekken is, you know, obviously Tekken kind of speaks for itself. But more interesting to me, outside of the volcano joke, um, is the way that he plays is very combo heavy and very Tekken like. And they yeah. they showed that like minute like digest of just his move set right and it and i think we're all kind of just wondering how in god's name does this work <laughs> how do you fit that with super smash brothers control scheme yeah. you know yeah I, like, I am, smash and neutral attack right yeah. like i am very intrigued to see how they pulled this one off so that's not I great wonder if the b be. button will not be s- yeah did we see a special or maybe the b button's just he, like punch kick yeah so he had um there was a couple moves that looked like they could be specials, but I had the same thought as you were. I'm wondering if it's like Min Min, where the traditional like smash button and and special button are not. Yeah. So with that would be cool. Um, that ten hit the 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 move that's a literally called ten hit combo. I'm just so curious how that works. <laughs> like, <laughs> and those the moves are specific. Com- oh, wait, go on. 
Sorry, I was just saying, those moves were, like, specific. Like, they all have their names. They're all from Tekken. Like, they all have utility. I'm just curious how that works. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, the only combos we have so far besides this is, like, those... Like, Marth's, like, side B stuff where you time it. So I wonder if his stuff is timing-based at all. Yeah, I can imagine some sort of timing element. I mean, to be fair, Smash Bros. has plenty of... there. Like most fighting games, Smash Bros. has combos, and like real combos, and it has, you know, not-so-true combos, which mostly just means if it's a not, not a true combo that, you know, someone can get out of it somehow if it's not true. And, you know, Smash Bros. has this as well, and um, I'm just very curious, like, you know, how deep this goes, because, like, you know, Ryu and Ken also sort of have this setup as well, where you have, you know... Um, you know, low, uh, low kick, low kick, low kick, you know, and into like a, uh, into Shoryuken or Hadoken or, or whatever. Um, but Kazuya is definitely like, definitely a different feel. Yeah. It's it, 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 like, this seems like, you know, cause you could say, Oh, another fighting game character, but I, I, I would not be surprised if, if Kazuya is a lot more unique, uh, compared to Ryu and Terry, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, even Ryu and Terry barely play similar. You know what I mean? But like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would definitely say Terry is very different enough. Right, and so so I I would bet Kazuya just feels very different from those other fighting game characters, and I think that you know, I mean, I mean, Sakurai this is what Sakurai does best. You know, he just yeah. implementing like the base the the source material so wonderfully in the confines of Smash Brothers. You know, yeah, so I, I am. I am very excited just for the collaboration in general. It means we get that cool looking stage. We get Tekken music, which is a big win yes. in general because Tekken, Tekken series me. soundtracks are yeah. incredible. Um, and we have spirits too. So like it's again, it's not just the character. Um, the character is obviously the focus and is really cool. But, um, you know, I, I'm down for the full collaboration. I can't wait to see what else they do. We got Hihachi in the background of the stage at the very least. I guess, by the way, are you surprised it's not Hihachi? Um, a little. Uh, I kind of wanted it to be Yoshimitsu. That guy's cool. Yeah, you know, we were talking a little bit last night. I was like really late. Uh, we we're like, oh, what if Yoshi Yoshimitsu was in it? And we we're like, how would he ha we handle his alts? And I was just like, Yoshimitsu's been in every Tekken, so his all of his alts would be his costume from every single every game. Tekken. Yeah. <laughs> And he's also in Soul Calibur too, so he'd he be kind of like repping two like games. A, yeah, he'd be like a dual, a dual rep. I think he would be an interesting choice. Um, you know, there are other choices I would I've maybe chosen someone else besides Kazuya, maybe. But I think I mean Kazuya is essentially like one of the main characters of Tekken. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say the main deserving. characters would be like Jin, Kazuya, and Heiji, right? Yeah, like, those yeah. Are, I think those I, yeah. are three. I would have guessed Hihachi or Jin before I thought they would do Kazuya, but um, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Oh, I, I'm, I'm yeah. totally. I, mean, fine I think with it's this. Cool. I think. I mean, I, I, you know, everyone, everyone always thought it was gonna be Hihachi, and then so, so for it to not be Hihachi, I was just like, oh, cool. You know, just cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. like, it's like how we got Min Min instead of Spring Man. It, yeah. it's cool that they're not going just for the Ryu character. Right. Yeah, I or we got like Pyra Mithra instead yeah. of Rex, like. I, I think that's good, and his devil form stuff is cool. I mean, yeah. Jin Jin has that as well, but I'm curious to see how exactly it plays out in his moveset. If it's something like Sephiroth's, like uh, one winged mode, or if it's a little different. I thought it would be like Joker. Uh, oh, how that's Joker's like persona charges, and then the little the dude comes out of his back. You know, it'd be kind of funny as if it's just like none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be none of these. Yeah. Um, but the presentation for him is coming up on, on June 28th. Uh, it's a 40 minute presentation. And honestly, wow, that's Lord. my favorite thing about these other Sakurai presentations. Yeah. I can't wait for the tech and history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, after that, we got some, uh, some third party stuff. Um, I think the most significant, uh, is the life is strange stuff that was rumored forever is finally happening. This um, is awesome. It's great. Yeah. I'm, it's so weird though, because like True Colors is coming the same day as it's coming to the other platforms, but it's like yeah, you're just announcing it now. It's so strange. Happy it's happening though. I think this is the way I want to play it. So I, I'm super down. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I've always wanted to play these games. I played um, uh, Don't Nod made the first Life is Strange, and I played their 
Xbox title. Tell me uh, why. Tell me why. That was yeah. great. So I, I want to go back and play Life is Strange. Yeah. It looks very charming. They're definitely not my type of game, but it's something that I think is interesting and cool, and it sets itself apart from like other narrative style games um like what they showed of the new one where like you can kind of see what people are feeling and like kind of like absorb it or like influence it it's like really neat and you see people's like you kind of see into people like you exist in people's minds basically like when you like are you know extreme empathizing or whatever with them like you yeah. see like things differently i think i think it's a really it's, cool it's kind of like you're seeing their true colors oh my uh, god, <laughs> god. I, I also like the anime style in the trailer like that's not what the games yeah. look like but I, I really i thought that was cute having yeah i wasn't expecting that from the three games i didn't realize what it was, was yeah i didn't realize what it was at first because of that and then i saw the the, the only one that i knew off the top of my head was the the girl from true colors and i was like oh okay <laughs> like i'm sure Everyone else knew what it was who has played Life is Strange. but um, And then we also had Guardians, which, you know, this was shown at Square. I personally am not into it, but the one thing I wanted to note is that they, for some reason, didn't mention that it is a cloud version on Switch. In Weird, weirdly, they wouldn't mention that. Very yeah, strange you... omission. <laughs> like, that yeah. That seems, like, kind of important to know. Kind of, uh, like, dishonest marketing. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Which is weird, because when Hitman and Control happened a couple directs back, they were very blunt. These, these are cloud versions, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. So for them to be, like, to, to present this as just normal, very strange. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the JP game. version even had it as cloud version. Yeah, but not the American. The it's just so it was. Yeah. It was weird, really weird, really. really I think weird. I'm I'm more positive on the game than these two. I th I think it looks pretty fun. It's looks kind of like a mix. Like the action looks good, fine, but I I like the narrative stuff. There's a lot of focus on like narrative choices. I'm hoping the combat works better in action than it looked, but it didn't look awful. It made me so. This is maybe a weird comparison but the game made me think of final fantasy 7 remake in the sense that okay the, the main game is the combat system mm -hmm. and then in between the combat system you're sort of walking around and making light interactions and narrative choices right so the game sort of lives or dies on its combat essentially like yeah if for some reason final fantasy 7 remakes combat was awful then that would be a death blow for that game, but it's really good, so it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the combat, one, I have two thoughts. One, it's weird that they don't let you play as anyone but Star-Lord. I kind of get the idea they're going for, like, narrative-wise, and the idea of you ordering them around or making decisions. And I do like the, like, in battle that you can, like, you know, summon your, your, your compatriots and, you know, direct them to do attacks. Mm -hmm. But the thing with Star Lord, his combat, you're playing as as him. His combat just did look so nothing to me. Like it felt like it. it the felt hits like, didn't seem very heavy. Yeah, yeah, it didn't. Yeah, nothing felt like it had any punch. It felt like we were like they were holding the shoot button, waiting for you know the enemy meter to to drown, and in the meantime, they were calling your partners to do the actual cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Which was weird. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of my take on that. Hopefully they um, do a demo because I'm still interested in trying it. I, I like the the guardians. Yeah, and the the, the comedy looked like like it, it looked entertaining. I appreciate that it's not like a live service game. That it's mm -hmm, like a single player much. experience and is fine with being that. Yep. Um. But yeah. Anyway, that's guardians. Yeah, but uh, that's guardians. Beyond Guardians, uh, afterwards we had a little montage of a couple things. Um, was there anything that anybody wanted to talk about from that? We had like Two Point Campus, Worms. Uh, just probably of those, the only one I really cared about was Two Point Campus. I, I didn't play Two Point Hospital very much, but I like those kind of management games. And yeah, they're, they're, they're charming management games. They look fun. And I would yeah. be interested in trying this one. No, for me, the one really oh. stood out to me, but yeah. Yeah. For me, there was one that stood out to me, and that was Cruisin Blast. Um, oh so yeah, Cru Cruisin Blast was has only been in arcades. I want to say it was released in 2017. Um, Nintendo owns this IP with Raw Thrills, 
Wow, I didn't Excuse know. That. Yeah, and you know there hasn't been a cruising game on consoles in years. Um, so I do, they showed a little bit in the the direct, but I looked at the actual trailer, and so what I thought was really cool is. So it has the full arcade version in it, and the full arcade version is just like five tracks, right? Mm -hmm. But the Switch version of this is basically like a new game. They've added so many tracks. There's like almost 30 tracks in this version. Tons wow. of different racers and drivers, everything from like unicorns to like probably, a, I think I saw a taxi cab and like normal cars and stuff. There was a shark and with lasers. The shark, the shark with lasers is great. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have like you, you I guess you can kind of like unlock a lot of the tracks and racers by you know collecting stuff as you drive. And it's got you know up to four player split screen. Um, I don't think they said anything about online. You know, and it you know the game doesn't the game isn't a looker, but like I'm hoping that it's like stable enough and and the tracks are fun enough that like it'll be a nice arcade racer alternative for mario kart because i'm yeah. very down for that yeah we, we um, do not get enough arcade racers like the, the trailer did not impress me at all but i would definitely be willing to keep an eye on it i'm interested yeah. just for the histor historical aspect of it you know mm -hmm. yeah you know and i'm also curious about the pricing um you know if they price it at like 40 or 30 or something like that i think that's a pretty good value for what you're getting you know yeah definitely yeah. um now, the next thing that was shown is Monkey Ball, and I'm a Hell huge yeah. Monkey Ball fan. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I love Monkey Ball. So, uh, something I just want to quickly mention about this one, since we did get some details after the trailer um, from Sega. Um, so, it is it Monkey Ball uh, Banana Mania is um, it's basically a remake of Monkey Ball One, Two, and Deluxe. It has all the stages from those games. Or rather, three hundred stages for the, from those games, which I think is all of them, uh, it's a and lot the of mini stages. games. Yeah, it's a lot of stages. Um, and uh, did you say top... all the mini games? Sorry. Uh, yeah. So we were doing. Know. We were looking last night to see. They said twelve mini games, and twelve mini games are what were in Monkey Ball Two and Deluxe. Phew. So, um, yeah. So it's got all that. Um, it has online rankings. Uh, there was something about an online time trial mode, but I'm unclear if that's one and the same. Um, and you can uh, you can actually customize your monkey uh, with like <laughs> you know costume pieces and customize the ball and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, like so many people, including myself, were waiting for something like this that would be like a return to form for Monkey Ball. Um, you know, and I'm still waiting a little bit just to see a little bit more detail. But like, I'm very happy about this. I'm uh, so there, excited. There, there's one detail that people were worried about in the trailer. Yes about the jump yeah um a rep came out and said the jump is off by default yes which is and very i think cool. i think that's very cool right so like the issue with the jump in games like banana blitz hd is the stages are built around the idea that you need to jump and in my personal opinion the jump mechanic doesn't work very well i don't think it's good or fun but mm -hmm. i think the jump as an assist tool in stages that are not built around it, stages that you can kind of break with the jump as an optional assist tool is actually a very good inclusion. Um, like, I think we'll see speed runs of Banana Mania that are like no jump and jump, and you'll see very different things. I'm just yeah. very happy about it. Um, I know the I digital the digital deluxe includes classic skins and the original soundtrack. Um, Sadly, that isn't in the, the physical version, but apparently it will be made available either as, you know, DLC or something else. Um, but, I mean, thirty nine ninety nine comes with, like, a 50-page art book for some reason. Oh, it's, um, it's only $39. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, it's, that's a uh, lot of game. The, yeah. It's if you haven't 39... played Monkey Ball before, it is a really fun labyrinth game, like, like marble adventure game. But also the mini games are surprisingly good. Like, they're some of the best mini games in yeah. in gaming yeah I, I can't tell you how much monkey bowling i played with my dad or <laughs> you know monkey target is there Monkey target could be its own <laughs> game yeah um it's that and, fun uh, yeah so it's 39 on consoles and it's 29 on pc so, oh wow um which i think they awesome. did for banana blitz hd as well but, yeah yeah um very pleasantly surprised Mm -hmm. um i think the only real miss is there isn't online for the mini games I think yeah that, that, really that would cool. that would be really cool but, but speaking of something that does have online yes. for the mini games look at that segue 
Yeah, so... you take it. You take it on one up. All right. Next we this. have Super. Uh, sorry, no, not Super Mario Party Superstars, which is let's say I have not played a Mario Party since eight, and I am mostly nostalgic for one to three. And this game was made directly for me and my like fellow audience. It is a collection that has five boards. The boards are from only the Nintendo 64 games, and the mini games are spread across all of the games, but the majority is from N64 and GameCube. Yep. And it has full online support. What? Yes. With, with yeah, save you. states for like with a save yeah. state of a turn. So, so, so this like is my really, dream Mario Party. They, they yeah. really thought out the online this time, right? They they did they made um it's there from the start. Um, I am so excited for this. Um, mm-hmm. because look, I am with you, Muffin. That like the N sixty four trilogy of Mario Party games. That is the peak of Mario Party. No question yeah. about it to me. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, that is where all my nostalgia is. I I think they're just the best games in general. Right, they are. There, there's some great GameCube ones. They're fun. Oh yeah, but, but, but you the know. N64 ones, I think, even this push nostalgia aside, I think they have amazing boards. Yeah, awesome mini games, especially two and three. I I didn't really play one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I didn't have that one, but I love two and three. Yeah, I love two and three. I I mostly played two. I played a little bit of three though. Never got the chance to play one, but I you know this is just fantastic. I I am a little dis like I have some complaints. Like I, I wish there was more boards. I think five is yeah. It's not the worst thing in the world because Mario Party 1 has 8, Mario Party 2 yeah. and 3 have 6 each. I would have liked if they matched at least 2 and 3, like have 6. And Super has 4. You know? Super has yeah. 4, so this is this is more than Super. And I think the reason why I'm so excited for this is because I think this is a big upgrade over Super for a couple of reasons, yes. right? Because I think A, having one more board, obviously, great, right? But the fact that, so, it's not just that we're getting the N64 boards, but we're getting the N64 rule sets, right? So, yeah. these maps are bigger, so we're back to a 10 dice block set, ten right? Die. Ooh, yeah. 10 die. Ooh, that's ten, a nice size die. It, it, it makes, like, it, it seems like a small thing, but having those bigger boards makes so much of a difference in, like, you feeling like you got your money's worth, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and, and 100 top, mini games and, is you know, more than, uh, it's awesome. Oh yeah, that, that's that's you know, especially doing it all throughout. Not, not the mini games. That's something you don't need to limit to N sixty four, right? And so I'm glad yeah. that they chose not to do that. Um, and, and you know, you're going back to your classic rule set because we've already tried some interesting things. But I, this is I think this is more what I want though. You know, from my party <laughs> is just give me the N sixty four thing but modern, right? But that's really kind of <laughs> yeah. all I want, and, and that's yeah. what they're giving me. So I, I I'm excited, and and this is funnily, they did something similar. On the 3DS, very late 3DS yes. game, Mario Party: The Top Hundred, but you know I think that was not as good of a product, and also it was on the 3DS. Who's playing Mario Party on the 3DS? It I had know, no boards. It, yeah. too. it also had no boards. It was just that was more about the mini games, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas oh, I think absolutely. this is just a smarter version of that on a system where it makes more sense. Um, and I don't yeah. think that one had online either. No, and, and this, no, it definitely didn't. didn't. Um, so this one is just. This it, is, it checks every single box oh, every that has maybe not get Mario Party since eight. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 So for me, um, I'm one of those weird people who owns every single <laughs> released Mario Party. Like, you know, obviously I don't own the arcade m- machines or whatever, but like, I own one through ten. I own DS, all the three DS ones. I have the E Reader one. Like, I, I I have all the Mario Parties, um, and I think even though it's more BS than the others, that Mario Party 1 is still my favorite because it's got this weird and unique thing about it. Like, it's very mean-spirited. Oh, yeah. But, it is so mean-spirited with everyone, yeah. Like, you'll, people, like your opponents will lose coins when you win minigames. Um, <laughs> it has a lose-a-turn space, you know, that will just, you know, just stop you in your tracks. You know, it's got all this silly stuff in it, but it also has a lot of really neat stuff in it. And I think taking minigames from the first three... It, um, and the whole series is great. Um, there's already a lot of really great mini games in there. Um, Peach's birthday cake was one of the boards they showed, and that board is the biggest pain in the ass in the universe. It is a douchey board. Like I'm just gonna say, it's just straight up douchey, and it's perfect. Um, <laughs> For my party, and yeah. I'm just really happy to see that in there. And I'm hoping we see you know some more. We we know Peach's birthday cake. 
Spaceland, and then the, the box art showed that Woody's Woods from Mario Party 3 is in there as well, um, which is also a great board. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, one thing I wanted to note um, that kind of came up um, later, I think during Treehouse, um, is uh, there's a new feature now where in the middle of a game, you can add more turns. Oh, what? Oh, wow. So if yeah. you think you don't have enough Mario Party... Yeah, or like if everyone's smart. having a good time, and do we, like, oh, do we man. know the turn maximum? We don't. Um, I hope it's fifty. I'm gonna, I hope yeah, I'm gonna it's fifty. 50. It's, I'm gonna guess it's fifty. Um, the but yeah, you can, page mentioned thirty, but I really hope it's fifty. Because yeah, because yeah, I mean, that, that was the other thing, right? The max in Super was twenty, I think. Right? It was I think small. It was thir- I think it was thirty. Um, but, okay, 30, so but... so one one the gold map supports thirty, but none of the other ones do. Into interesting it. yeah 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 the, the other ones are only 20 yeah that's what it was yeah it was and that yeah. was so disappointing in super and so you know i mean a i think the bigger boards will help but i think you know having 50 turns would be just yeah. icing on the cake for me also Mario well, party's about misery and 50 turns gets you that's there. that's what you need you know <laughs> for real um i'm also i'm not expecting it it's foolish too but Please do DLC this time. Please yeah. do DLC add this more, time. Be- add more maps, please. Like, yeah. Add Honestly, mini packs, sure. If they just added like one board or two, yeah. I'd be so happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and one other thing I, I did want to touch on about Mario Party is uh, compared to Super Mario Party, you can tell they're definitely listening in terms of usability. So yeah. first off, you can use any controller this time, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. and, uh, they've really sped up the, the, the board gameplay. Um, they've cut down on a lot of the extraneous, you know, animations. Um, they move, even the characters just straight up move so much faster between spaces. And I think something that people forget from the original trilogy of Mario Party games is I know at the very least Mario Party 3 had the feature where you could actually speed up actions. Um, and then you get to Mario Party 4, and everything is so goddamn slow. Like, mm-hmm. extremely slow. And Super Mario Party, I liked because it, presentation-wise and feel-wise, like, it was very good, but it was still very slow. Um, so they fixed that, which is cool. Um, and the other thing I don't think people have really noticed much yet uh, is, in terms of items, it mixes the Super Mario Party items with classic items. Um so you'll still see, uh, you know, double dice, triple dice, um, choose your own dice, like the cursed dice and stuff like that. But, you know, the skeleton key obviously is back for Spaceland. Um, you, there's a chain chomp, like, whistle of some kind, which <laughs> I can't remember if that was in another one or not. I feel like um, that maybe, and, maybe three or something. Yeah, and then they had the, the warp block item from uh, from the original trilogy in there as well. So there's definitely some more interesting variety for items. Um, and uh, I'm kind of glad that it's a mix of the two. Like, the mushroom is still there. It's just like the Super Mario Party mushroom where it just adds five to your roll automatically because they have the double dice. Um, so oh, like, double dice is a separate thing. Yeah, so double dice Got is its it. own okay. thing. Because mushroom then, used to be the double dice one. Yeah, mushroom used to be double dice, and then golden mushroom was triple dice. So now those are dice, but the uh, the mushroom is still there and, and adds, you know, to your roll, okay. which I yeah. think is a good compromise, honestly. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm very stoked for this one. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, the the mini games they've shown so far is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. I can't I can't complain. I it looks my, great. Does anyone have a, a mini game that they hope makes it in? I saw a lot I liked in there already. Yeah, honestly, the, got... like the list is already looking really good. You know, they well, got book squirm. What else yes. do you need? Well, I know there's one you wanted, muffin, which was uh, shell shocked. Is oh tank. yeah, I want shell shocked. That's the, yeah. the tank one. And I'm personally, I really want Goomba Bowling from Mario Party Nine because that mm-hmm. game is actually super fun. Um, I think somebody mentioned the dog fighting one. Was that you? Yes, uh, I know. I think. I know, I know someone else did too, but yeah, the one from Mario Party 3, the dogfighting one is yeah, fun that's a as fun well. One. I love those ones too, because they look so ridiculous too, because it's like a tank with a Mario head. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. So, it's not It's not Mario in a tank, it is a tank with Mario head. Um, it's very silly. Yeah. Uh, it's, what's that pizza one? 
yeah eats a pizza from Mario is that 23. in there yeah it's a, it is someone oh, already good. found it okay. i think it's on the box art actually great um but yeah so and they have the puzzle easy. one that's great too yeah, yeah, yeah. For Mario Party Three, the uh, mm-hmm. like the two block puzzler. So three, I'm three my 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 main thing is I'm curious if there's other modes. If there's extra mode again with like the full length versions of mini games, um, like Mario Party Three had a full version of the puzzle game. Uh, oh, yeah, Mario yeah. Party Nine had a full version of Goomba Bowling. I'm hoping that stuff's there. That would be great. Yeah, I, I would love some side modes because I, I don't have super yet. I, I kind of want it with now with the online. Yeah, but they have some cool looking side modes. They have like a rhythm mode. Yeah. they have dual mode. They have there's there's a lot of stuff in that pack. I, th- I think it is yeah. more full feature than people give it credit for. Well, I, what I think is interesting is that the two Mario Party games that are on Switch now are both very different from each other, and I think mm-hmm. serve different purposes. Um, I think I... Super Mario Party is generally an easier game, maybe for some people to get into who aren't as familiar with Mario Party. Definitely is a little bit slower um the controls are definitely more like you have some motion games there's some more variety in content it's a different sort of package and then this game is very much like the classic mario party experience like dialed up to 11 Mm -hmm. um so i'm kind of curious to see what happens when this one releases what were you saying mina i uh what i was gonna say was um super mario party is one of those games that just keeps selling right yeah and so mm-hmm. i am really curious to see what happens to that game sales after this comes out um because if it doesn't slow down super is gonna be a 20 million seller you know <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah i'm curious yeah. if this slows it down any or if they just both sell well who knows yeah, yeah. i mean hell i think they're different enough like i might even buy super if, I, if like i want more yeah. mario party i think they can coexist mm-hmm. i really do i think they're, they're not... different enough it's it's not like a like a Smash Four and Ultimate like if those were on the same platform nobody would buy Smash Four it's not like that yeah one doesn't obsolete the other mm-hmm. um, um so the last thing I'll personally say on Super Mario Party or Mario Party Superstars <laughs> is it's absolutely beautiful I think it might be the best looking game in maybe the entire show. It's so like clean. Graphical yeah. Like it is so clean. Like it, it just it visually it is so pretty. Um yeah, I'm 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 really like wowed by the graphics cuz it, it just great lighting, great yeah. water. Yeah. It, just, it looks really good. Um so beyond Mario Party, before we get to our next big banger, there was a small segment which confirmed post-launch DLC for Mario Golf. More importantly, free golf courses like New Donk City. I just wanted. Oh, to... that that's that's actually very, very cool. Very yeah. very cool. I wanted I wanted to mention that specifically because I know there was a bit of concern about the number of golf courses mm-hmm. in, you know, in in Super Rush, which is out very soon. Um, yeah. And I'm just Next stoked they're going the Mario Tennis, the Mario Tennis Aces route, and adding characters and and now courses. Yeah, that um, that's so great because they they, they were paid in 3ds. Yeah, they were paid in the last one, so. Um, I'm excited about that. That that was a very nice little bite. Yeah, that that game looks fun. We'll we'll probably discuss it more when it comes out. But it looks like yeah. Fast. Um, but moving right along, uh, we had another big game right after. Um, a big announcement that a lot of people were hoping for was rumored for a bit, and that is uh, we finally have Metroid Five, which is indeed called Metroid Dread. Oh it's a great my! New two D Metroid. Goodness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like oh my god like can we talk about like how like this is a literal you know people going to e3 more than anything wanting dream announcements right Mm -hmm. i think metroid dread is a legitimate dream announcement and the way they the the way this i think this trailer made you realize that too right because right off the bat they start with metroid 5 they want you like that that is like a message to the hardcore fans right like we know that you want a game set after fusion you are getting it right yeah Um, just immediately yeah just immediately and then to call it metroid dread a game that was never officially announced right but it was canceled yep. 11 years ago. Canceled, yeah. They, and uh, interestingly, after the right after the direct and right before Treehouse, they did like a little dev diary with Sakamoto. Yeah. The game was canceled not once, but twice, interestingly. Which I, I didn't yeah. even know that they had tried again a second time. Right? Yeah. Um, but he sort of said, like, hey, like, I had ideas for this game for so long, 
but the hardware at the time, presumably the DS, right, um, yep. could not handle it, right? And, and yep. finally now, because it's on Switch, not only do I get to realize that, but go even beyond, right? Yeah. And I think we see that. Like, this game just looks phenomenal, you know? I am yeah. so excited for this game. Like, to, to, but, like, using that Dread title, I, like, it, that's so meaningful, you know? I yeah. think that is just oh, so yeah. meaningful to be like, yeah. we are, we heard you. That That's what it tells you, right? Yeah. That's very, very specific. Like, yes, we heard you. Um, you know, here it is. And, you know, this game is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, and you. once again, it is a, uh, a Mercury Steam is, is doing major work on this one with yes. uh, Nintendo. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of the new mechanics and stuff are very interesting. They've taken some of the stuff from Samus Returns and definitely touched it up. So, like, the melee stuff is faster. Um, you can do it while moving. The free aim is back. And you can also free aim a bit while moving. Um, you have the slide move now, which is more acrobatic. Um, you have, you know, you know, and the counters and all that are still in. Um, and, you know, there's other stuff. Like, the Aeon stuff from uh, Samus Returns is back in terms of, like, certain suit powers. Like, the, the camouflage one they showed off. Um, and this game just, it looks so good. It looks so stylish. It's my most anticipated um, game from this direct. Um, I, I would agree, I, I, and you know, yeah. I I think what's fascinating about this game too is that I mean, first of all, can we talk about like how different it looks from other Metroid games, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because I mean, if, hey, let's just start with Samus, right? She's yeah. not her oh, typical yeah. orange. Uh, her, her suit, I I love her new suit. This looks so good. I do. Right? I do yeah, love really the cool. new suit. B- big fan of it. Um, it's like and then, white and red, and it's neat. Yeah, very, very striking visually, you know, and very different. I love that it's different. You know, I love when, when yeah. we see characters in a, in, in a way we haven't seen them before, right? Um, and then the world, because, like, you know, I yeah. think the, my biggest quote-unquote fear going into an, a, a Metroid game, a new Metroid game, right, was that you were going to see, like, the typical Zebus-esque look, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a striking departure from like the the aesthetic of super metroid right yeah um it's got a lot of like white and black hues. yes yeah um, it, it, and it's very like metallic very you know yeah yeah it, it, and it, it's very interesting visually great, great yeah. steam effects and cool lava yeah. and a lot you of know, great visuals i was personally worried like oh man i really don't want the next 2d metroid to be in a space station with biomes again you know yeah. what i mean right like, right right they're like god and then they were like nope this is a planet um so i'm like all right cool and then they said something in the treehouse that was very interesting which is you know in normal not normal but in previous metroid games you know like when you go on um you know sr388 and whatnot you're starting on the surface and working your way into the core this one you start in the core and you're working your way out Ooh, that that's a cool which is little really version. cool yeah. really so, neat yeah they said like the game's about ascension yeah that's cool and then we would be remiss if we didn't mention the Emmys, the chase sequences yes. that are much more intricate than the SAX um, and other. I, I, I mean, this is probably the Emmys is probably what Sakamoto was kind of hinting at in, when he said that they couldn't realize their vision on old hardware, right? Um, yeah. Have having this kind of like uh, uh, is Mister X from RE two? Is that a good comparison point? Maybe not yeah, to the same extent. Yeah, I was going to say, Mr. Yeah. Mr. X, Nemesis type character. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I would bet programming that for the DS was a little bit harder, right? <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, now they have the technology to be able to, to pull that off in a, in a convincing way. And, and I think that's just a really cool element to add into a Metroidvania. These kind of, like, um, unbeatable monsters that you have to kind of avoid and, and, and hide from or run like hell from right yeah uh it, it adds this sense of tension which metroid is a, a very much about tension oh right? yeah absolutely so, so this 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 gameplay mechanic is just a perfect fit for metroid you know yeah i know i um what's interesting so just to compare from fusion uh with the sax um you know those sequences are scripted where you know the sax is always going to appear in this spot and yeah. you need to get you know, past her, and at some point she will no longer be there. Um, what they've done this time is, although the segments are still 
they're still kind of gated off as indicated by those like weird doors Mm -hmm. instead of the actual sequences being scripted it's more that now that you're in their zone they're listening for you they're looking out for you so they have this new thing with like sound um so you have to be careful about like the moves you make and what you shoot because they can actually like hear you um and it's like you know like you know based in like you know in a in spatial like you know if you're farther away from them it it's going to be less likely that they hear you um and just the way that they move around is very non-linear um yeah you can move to a part of one of these sections and it'll just be there. And the next time you go into that section, I saw this on Treehouse a few times, you know, they would walk into a section to a room and that thing would be there. And then the next time they went into that section, that room after they died, it wasn't there. It wasn't it was somewhere there. else. So yeah. it's a lot so, more dynamic than, than yeah. that. Yeah. It, it has a lot of different spawn points. It has a lot of like holes through the walls you can climb through that you can see. Yeah, they um, can And crawl. you can also like do like a stealth thing to hide yeah. from it for a little bit with like a meter. Yeah. Yeah, so the Aeon meter controls that camouflage um, thing. And what's cool, in my personal opinion, is that once when they're alerted to you, it's like a yellow kind of siren. Once they see you, like actually see you in their sight, it turns red and you cannot hide from them. Hmm. If you do the camouflage, they know you're there. Um, so that is very cool. I like that aspect of, of the tension. And can we just say, when they kill her, like, it's fucking brutal. It's yeah, brutal. Like it, it's, yeah. it's, it stabs Samus through the heart. Yeah, yeah like, they're like, all right, <laughs> you know, like, it, you're done. You like, it's, it's like a Resident Evil, like, kill animation. Like, less yeah. blood, but, like, that, like, level of, like, ow. I mean, it really yeah. lives up to the name Dread, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's also, like, at one point, Metroid, or Samus gets what I would call, like, a power pellet yeah. that she can use to, like, <laughs> yeah. temp temporary like fire like an ultra blast at yeah. emmy yeah to make it like go cannon. away for a bit that was yeah. cool yeah so it's a limited time power up that you get from like you know a, an interactable i'll call it a kiosk for fun um but you get like these massive you know this this item that only works i don't know if it's time limited or if it's just limited number of uses but yeah if you shoot the the emmy with it it'll you know make them go on the spritz for for a little bit and that's kind of like your only like that's like your desperation yeah you know attack um so that's very cool and then they showed a boss in treehouse looked, which was very great. cool yeah the boss was awesome um Some and really it really cool cinematic camera angles there yeah and it and it really uses the new like slide mechanic um the game just it's really works well with that slide mechanic where like certain you know especially when it's like in previous games you'd have a wall right and you'd have to crawl as a morph ball to go underneath it like one square um now the morph ball's still in the game and i'm sure there are longer morph ball sequences but now when you have like just a single high block you can just slide through it and it's just smoother and much faster and i i think it's just really interesting um and there was also the spider magnet which i'm not as wild about um but you can crawl up the wall and on the ceiling with it um, oh, they look cool. It's yeah. like the spider ball and Samus Returns, where like you can't go on every surface, so it's kind of not at quite as interesting to me. But like, it's right. still neat. Um, but the slide just feels like a natural evolution to Samus's move to, you know. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it is a thing that, like, you know, sometimes you just want to cover a quick space, and doing morph ball just takes a little too long, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. And and so just being able, to, and I think there's a general theme of the movement of this game. Is that it's just she's just so much more agile and I love it. I yeah. love it, you know. Yeah. That, that, that's a good evolution for Metroid. The the game is so smooth and not only in terms of her movement but like frame rate and stuff too. Um, like it's just it moves. It, it's so it's so hot. <laughs> that's that's what I'm gonna say. It's so damn hot. Um, and the UI and like everything is just so clean and like, yeah, I'm I'm just so ready for this game. Um, we had a special edition, um, with an art book that's 190 pages and it has, it's not just dread. It's all five mainline 2d Metroid games. 
And uh, there's the amiibo, which I'm still trying to get as of right now. <laughs> I am desperately trying to get this dang amiibo. Oh, it's offering. Yeah. Uh, and it is nice this time that the amiibo do not have like a you can't play hard. Yeah, that you was scan this thing. Savage Returns had a very <laughs> bad implementation of amiibo. Like it was just like very just bad. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, locking away key content. Can I just one last thing about Savage Returns and on the note of like the physical merchandise. This is the prettiest box art I've seen in the Switch era, I feel. That box art, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it's gorgeous, you know? It is I've seen, so yeah, pretty. I've seen some people talk about that. See, I actually did not like the box art. Really? I thought <laughs> it is, I just, I don't dig the red in the background. I actually really liked um, the outer box on the special edition uh, that kind oh, of sure. emphasizes like the white tones of the uh -huh. game. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so yeah, I'm not really wild about the box art, but like, I it's still like I I don't really care. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I can't yeah. believe I'm about to put a game on my shelf in the year 2021 that says Metroid. <laughs> Called Dread Metroid like... Dread. Yep, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Um, so yeah, uh, and then right Speaking after of, that, yeah, literally, literally, right after that, um. WarioWare shows up. Ah, yeah. No, the, no the one. E3 of dreams continues. The E3 yeah, of no one dreams expected continues. that. Uh, um, we got like so a I... brief glimpse of it, right? Like when we uh, there was a survey that they sent out. How much would you spend on WarioWare? Right. Right. Uh, which which my answer is a hundred dollars. But yeah. did yeah. sincerely going into this E3, did any of you ever once consider WarioWare as an E3 announcement? <laughs> no, I didn't no. think it would be this soon. I thought that like survey was like. We want to. We're gonna make one again. Right. And it'll be like we're just starting. A little far, you know? Uh, yeah, it's at like yeah. it showed up at E three. It's out in three months. Just crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's like, it's so different from the other it's, ones. Yeah, yes. you know, it's really cool. Um, I was kind of worried a little bit when I first saw the trailer, but seeing the treehouse really solidified. Yeah. Um, so let's, oh, let's yeah. discuss the the differences. Yeah. So, so in yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, so unlike a traditional WarioWare game where you get the instructions, you do the buttons, you are controlling a character. Directly. You're controlling like a chibi version of Wario, Jimmy, Mona, all the other ones. Yeah, etc. And you use these little characters. Each character has movement and one action. And you use these to beat the minigames. So like there's one where like you push a toothpaste. So Wario can like use a jetpack and shoot a gun and mona has a boomerang and you choose three characters kind of like in whatever like a marvel fighting game yeah and it'll randomly choose a character and a mini game which kind of like increases the variety even more mm -hmm. yeah so it's, it's it, very give, cool giving you direct control over a character at all times is such a shift for warioware right yeah but uh, it hurt uh, me at first but i think it's very cool i i think tree like if you are concerned about it watch the treehouse segment because it does a really good <laughs> yeah. job of selling yeah. you on the concept and i'm happy that it's this really is just cool. is going for something different you know yeah um yeah b because at first, yeah it, uh, th there's been so many warrior games right would I love right. it? What if it was like the other ones? Would I still love it? Of course, right? Um, <laughs> but the fact that it is going for something different makes me even more excited. And it turns out, hey, that's also a really smart way to do co op because you can have mm -hmm. each character, each person's controlling character, and that's a good way to make yep. sure that pretty much everything is multiplayer ready, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's like um, that means each there's like six characters, they all have different actions. And you're all each getting like a random version of each. And did you guys see Dribble and Spitz? Yeah. Yes. That's yep. so cool. So when you yep. when you click on Dribble and Spitz, each person gets one of them, and they can only shoot in one direction. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so yeah. Smart. And I mean, so they showed a bunch of characters. There's a bunch more they didn't show. It's probably more around the tune of like ten or twelve. Mm -hmm. Um. In the end, and like. Yeah, you know, at first I was slightly disappointed that we weren't getting, like, a Joy-Con-centric WarioWare. Um, yeah. With all the wackiness that that entails, especially after, like, Smooth Moves is so, like, you know, wild in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, not that, you know, I don't, I don't know if it necessarily precludes some, like, minor tilt stuff, but it's definitely mostly button-controlled. 
Um, yeah. But one thing I do think that's interesting is traditionally in WarioWare, you need to figure out what the instructions mean, what the controls do, and um, and what to do and execute on it, all in five seconds. What's interesting with this one is I think it could be a good gateway to, for some people to get into mm -hmm. WarioWare, where the controls are standardized now. Like, you know the controls and the actions that you have. Now you really just you need to focus on doing the thing that, you know, you have to do. And I do think that's an interesting shift. And I also think it's interesting because, yeah, each character does it in a different way. Like, Mona has a boomerang that she throws, but also she's riding her scooter, so she cannot stop moving. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like... Uh, young cricket is like a, makes it like a platformer where he can jump really high and move left and right, but he's like you know he's stuck on the ground, um, and you know eighteen nine, volt, yeah, eighteen volt, yeah, eighteen volt is always in the center or where he needs to be. That they they put you where you need to be on the screen, yeah. and all he can do is adjust like his projectile left and right and throw it at different angles. Um, you know, Orbulon, I think his they showed it briefly in the in the trailer. Orbulon has a UFO, and he can use his weird little suction thing, so he has to be on top of everything, right, to, to do stuff. So it's interesting because each of the micro games now is different depending on which character you use, and the high score tables also show, not on top of the score, it shows what your lineup of characters was. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so I'm kind of curious if maybe, you know, in the post game, maybe there'll be a mode where instead of picking three characters, maybe you pick one character and you go, you know, through all the micro games, and you can kind of see, like, you know, what characters you do better with high score wise. Mm -hmm. There's also um, one thing I wonder is like you can't since eighteen volt is stationary. Yeah, you, you can't have micro games that are like dodge this and stuff. Well, I think you still can if you give eighteen volt the ability to like instead of you know you have to dodge things but what if 18 volts projectile in those games breaks the obstacles instead mm. oh sure yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah and you know and, and i think that goes to show like this could you know i i think these quote-unquote limitations that each of these characters have um could really just make the variety of this shine even more you know but, but yeah because there's a lot you could do with with having these different characters that have different uh uh, uh, different, just wildly different move sets, you know, um, and, yeah. and it just adds to the replayability. You know, playing one micro game as one character to the next, it really is just a very, very different experience. And, and I, yes. I have full faith in them that the micro game variety is still good, even with a standardized move set. I, oh, I, have, I think the micro yeah. game variety is gonna be really good still. You know, I'm not Two, worried about 200, that. Two hundred, like two hundred plus micro games with different characters. And they also said, uh, this might not be true, but they said on the eShop page, it says there's four-player support. So I'm guessing yes. there's not the main mode. Obviously, the main mode's only two players. Two players. But WarioWare is known for some weird side modes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I would be excited to see those. I would bet some of those are four-players. Agree, yeah. Yeah, it would be kind of funny, actually, or interesting if they had some, this weirdly enough, uh, asymmetric multiplayer like game in wario where mm. the two main characters are playing micro games and maybe a third person is just messing with with them that'd be fun um, yeah shooting stuff which wario where mega micro games in the gamecube had that going on where someone was trying to play micro games and the other people would be characters running around and making poses on the screen to like block it and stuff <laughs> yeah that, that's such a great party game yeah but um god not to toot my own horn but like i'm just like too good at it to play with like my friends <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> it's it's a great i think this game so you know it makes the entry point i think slightly easier and it also mm -hmm. makes the game even more complicated and more filled with variety at the same time because of all the possibilities that this character system adds um it's, it's just, just kind a, of like a, a best of both worlds it is a really yeah. smart evolution of the formula it really is you know because i i, I yeah. always wondered what can, they can do to keep the series fresh because this it has had a lot of entries i yeah it's been a while since we saw one but but you know there's a lot of wire words right yeah. um yeah. there's one for, oh, yeah. for every every single nintendo console like, right I, I'll since, since inception one. right um yeah and so yeah you know i it, but they did it in a way where... Because Game Warrior, I think, strays too much in a way that it's just not WarioWare yeah. anymore, right? This is still WarioWare, but in a very unique and fresh way that is just exciting. Yeah, it's oh, just yeah. exciting. 
Um, All right. So next, next uh, up are moving, a few announcements. Yeah. So moving on from Mario, where we got some cool um, third party stuff, uh, which is um, Shin Megami Tensei Five, uh, Danganronpa Collection, and Fatal Frame uh, making its way to Switch. I don't know if y'all had anything to say about these. Nope. Danganronpa is just, uh, it's about time for me. Like, it's, goddamn, this take, wait, took yeah. way too long. But cool, finally here. Fatal Frame, Can... I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, finally, Danganronpa's here. Yeah. People have been asking for this game. People forever. have been just like, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's about time. Fatal Both of these seem like great games for the fans of those series. Fatal Frame is an like... interesting one because it was a Wii U exclusive. Wii U. Nintendo published yeah. Wii U exclusive, and yeah. now it's multi plat published by Koei yes. um, and i heard yeah. it was a i heard it was a bad one in the series i have heard I, like middling things i'm yeah, sure they mixed right but who knows uh cool that it's getting another chance though it looks cool not? yeah I'm, it, yeah. it looks glad it's hard it's, it's photographs like it looks like a cool series i would actually like I, to try it i'm sometime. very glad that it's not trapped on wii u oh, um, yeah, it is definitely. a digital only release at the moment maybe we'll get a chance to fatal frame fans can finally own in a box too um mm-hmm. Fatal Frame was the one that I was most happy to see. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Shin Megami Tensei Five, I thought looked really freaking cool. I don't like RPGs, really cool. but yeah. it looked really cool. It, it looked and then, surprisingly uh, cool. Yeah. And and getting a date November, that's fantastic. You know, that that's yeah, another game that was was just kind of vaporware for so long. That was announced when the Switch was announced, uh, the conference, yeah. right? <laughs> it's like uh, one of the first Switch games announced. Yeah. And, and that's um, the only and... one in that conference that hasn't come out yet, right? Uh, or I, I guess think so, but, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, yeah. finally, this game is coming out. It looks like a very huge evolution for the franchise, right? Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I'm excited. I, why not? Yeah. Let's and, go. Um, and uh, just one more thing in regards to Danganronpa. I like that they've taken that board game, I guess, that was yeah. in the third game and kind of expanded it. That collection is very high value. Yeah, That's surprisingly so. full games on one cartridge that is like a dream scenario for Danganronpa on switch and obviously you know they're individually purchasable on the eShop but like if you're a Danganronpa fan or like you've wanted to get into Danganronpa like and you've been waiting and praying it would get on switch this is like the perfect way to do it I think the only thing missing is Ultra Despair Girls which I've heard is kind of whatever we don't want it we don't want it (laughs) we don't want it okay all right I guess we don't want it all right well moving on to something that we do want we had another Big surprise. As if Metroid, Dread, Warrior Wear weren't enough, we have a series that was thought to be on ice coming back, and that is Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, uh, and it is by way forward. Yeah, that's correct. That, I think that's the most thanks. Well, I mean, no, no, no. The most unexpected part is just Advance Wars come back at all, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a yeah. crazy announcement. Um, yeah. This is a franchise that has been dormant since the DS, as far as I know, right? Um, yeah. So, so it's been on ice for a while. I think this is one of those games where anytime people mention Advance Wars, there'll be a group of people telling you there's no point in bringing it back, right? Um, mm-hmm. No, clearly someone saw worth in it uh, because it's coming, it's here. Uh, I think doing one and two together is a smart move, especially for a new yes. studio. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, Mercury Steam. They got to kind of, mm-hmm. uh, they, they got to learn how to make a Metroid game by remaking an older one, right? Right. A- yeah. And and I think, I'm hoping that we see the same evolution that we saw for Metroid with Mercury Steam. I'm hoping we kind of see the same thing here with uh, yeah. Way Forward and Advance Wars, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. And these these are big games, too. Like, this is this is, this is a sizable pack. Yes, I yes, think it is. The first game is, like, 15 hours, and the second one's, like, 30. So that's a... You're getting like out, it you're seems like valuable... it seems like it seems like sixty dollars a lot, but it's it's a good amount of game there. Yeah, you know, I have not ever gotten into Advance Wars before. I'm kind of thinking about it now. They're but having so fun. both having like both the games together, and then something they weirdly didn't say in the trailer, but clarified in the direct that there is two player online and four Ooh. player. Mobile. Um, you know. Wait did did and... they did they confirm if that co op was only lo- local? That, well, they said at, at in in the trailer or in the product page, it mentions like, oh, you can do up to four player local multiplayer. What it didn't mention was that there's two player online multiplayer mm, as well. Got it. Um, and so something that Advance Wars is known for it also is its map editor and stuff like that. So I'm, that's what I'm mostly hoping to see has made it 
Oh, um, sure, yeah. Into, into this remake. But, God, yeah. I really dig the visual style. I know some people were kind of down on the, like, the figurine map, like, table I, yeah. I think kind it's of cute. thing. I'm mixed on I, it. I, 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 think, I think it's fine. I really think it's cute. I think a, a little toy soldier kind of aesthetic, I, mm-hmm. I think I think it works. And, and, and I do think... Even if you don't like the, the toy soldiers and the and the three D models, I do have to say the portraits look very good. Yeah. The, yeah. The, oh yeah, the, the, the portraits look great. The, the, the animation looks yeah. totally good enough yeah. for me. Uh, I I like it overall. I think it looks like a great package. And I'm just the, happy the it's back. I am just happy yeah. that Advance Wars is coming back. I'm so happy it's back. Yeah, the the uh, character I, I love portraits the DS are one. so good. Mm-hmm. Like God. Um and yeah, I do love the combat scenes and stuff. And I, I do think it's interesting. I can see why people wouldn't like the toy soldier aesthetic. Maybe they feel it doesn't totally fit the game. I think it fits it fine from what I know of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I do appreciate that it makes it kind of like a tabletop war game. Like, yeah, in look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the missions are on a table. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's like you're actually, it's almost like you're playing like yeah. Warhammer or something. <laughs> like, it's clever. Yeah, it is. Um, so happy to for fans of Advance Wars. But that's they're bad. so snappy, and I think what WayForward did is they kept that snappiness. Like, these games, the animations were really quick. Everything yep. just felt really smooth, and that is still here, and that's what Advance Wars is. It is the, very fast-paced tactics. The one thing that I did notice, which it isn't a big deal, um, I'm guessing it'll probably be a little bit improved by the time the game is out, is that it did sometimes feel like the battle transitions took a little bit to get mm. back to the map. Um, oh, sure. But they have six months still, yeah. right? It's on December. Yeah, and, Hopefully they can get and, that. I mean, and obviously, you know, you can also turn off the battle animations like in the original games. So, yeah, right. Um, but, like, yeah, such such a great package. Um, I'm excited to see more details. I just want to hear that that map editor is back um, and that you can share maps online because that would be so fun. Imagine sharing maps online and then playing those shared maps with your friends i I think the yeah. ds one probably had that right that sounds fun i'm not sure i've, I've never played advanced force multiplayer yeah oh, i've only okay. i've yeah, only they... ever played like the campaign for one like that is my full extent of advanced force experience um but I, I, I yeah i'd be interested in these other modes and stuff too for sure yeah the yeah. one i played most was dual strike for the ds yeah, I know, like, some people say, like, oh, well, I mean, we already have Fire Emblem, like, do we need Advance Wars? And I would say yes, like... These are very, very different distinct. games! No, yeah, you are so different. Like, Just you... because they're both tactics games, <laughs> you I, know? I, I, I cannot tell you how angry I am hearing. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, you know, I, I've heard that. Very, very different. Like, there's room for both, especially because, like, hey, Intelligence Systems is not even doing this one. So, you know what, if you were worried yeah. about... Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it coming to the expense of Fire Emblem, it's not. This is just an addition, yeah. and this is good. I'm happy. Um, yeah. Like, I mean, Fire God. Emblem, you're very precious with your troops because obviously they're named characters. You don't want them to die. In, in Advance Wars, they are like they're soldiers. Some they're expendable yeah. sometimes. Like you, you might send someone out knowing they they're not going to come back home to see their family. But you know, you're you a commander. And that's what you got to do. Because it's war, Sonic. That's because it's war. war. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I I find it kind of nuts when people are like, you know, we obviously Fire Emblem is here. It's safe. It's coming. It's it's always coming. There's new ones being made all the time. I think you know, even if Intsis were doing this Advanced Wars themselves, yeah, I still think it would have been got them work on something right? else yeah. sometimes. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's cool, but um. But, but hey, yeah. the fact that it is a new studio, I think is even more exciting to me because, hey, like, you know, yeah. that just means more games for us, you know, and that's great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and I do agree that I hope that maybe, um, you know, way forward and it sits can kind of collaborate to make new ones in the future if this does For well. sure. That would be cool. I um, hope so. Before we move on to the, because there's, there's only one last part to this direct, right? Um, yeah. One last segment. Uh, but One this, last big segment. Yeah, it is a big segment. <laughs> but before we talk about that i do want to appreciate we got four brand new first party game announcements all of them look great all of them are yeah. out by the end of the year you know how oh, yeah. great is like, that you I, know? I basically want all of these games yeah, yeah like 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 just four stellar games that are out within the next six months and that we didn't know existed until yesterday you know and yeah. three of three of them are returns of uh, okay two of them are dormant franchise or 
I mean, uh, I think, I think you can count There are Metroid, three games that I didn't expect to see. Yeah, Metroid, WarioWare, and Advance Wars are are games, even if, like, WarioWare, the latter two got 3DS entries very late, I think it's fair to say those are franchises we have not really seen in a in a big way in a long time, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so seeing these three franchises for the first time in so long... In the um, center stage. At, at, and center stage at E3, right? It, that's just, yeah, I, I, it's great. I, I, I it, thought this director Advance was... Wars isn't a throwaway, like, eShop game either. This is a $60 full-price retail release. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they, they are really, they, they consider these major titles, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they position them as such, and I, I, I was just very pleased with Nintendo as a software publisher, uh, for the rest of the year, you know? I, I, I I'm yeah. really excited to play yeah. these games. This is a fantastic this, year for nintendo yeah this this whole year has been stacked and the second year this ha- the second half of this year is absolutely even better stacked. Yeah. yeah um and i think this e3 they really nailed like the kind of presentation that the e3 audience is looking for um mm-hmm. the e3 audience is the audience that cares about like you know stuff like advance wars or, or WarioWare showing up yeah. um stuff like metroid showing up and getting you know that kind of breakdown and that kind of attention um and you know weirdly dc superhero girls was not here (laughs) yeah and i mean it's just they they did a very good job with that uh and also um i think now would actually be a good time right before we get into our last segment here um treehouse was great i had a lot of fun at treehouse it's always (laughs) good to see treehouse um there was a special segment of treehouse that was not shown um live but it was a segment on no more heroes 3 um, and I kind of do wish they just kind of at least threw a No More Heroes 3 trailer in the direct. But this segment was about 20 minutes of gameplay of No More Heroes 3. And I, I did want to break mention a little bit because that game is currently coming out in August. Uh, there isn't a first party release scheduled for August right now. So for all, m- for my personal intents and purposes, it's the August game. Um, and yeah, I mean, it looks really cool the combat looks fun i really like the inclusions they've added from travis strikes again um because that game's combat is very cool and in my opinion much more interesting than the first two normal no more heroes games and this you know this entry has that mixed with the standard no more hero stuff like the wrestling moves and and stuff like that um they showed an awesome boss battle um some neat customization stuff basically all of this is to say, if you have not watched the Treehouse segment on YouTube of No More Heroes 3, I would highly recommend it. Um, I think No More Heroes fans will be really excited about it, um, and I think it'll be a lot of fun when it comes out in August. Awesome. Um, but, right. moving on, we had one last big segment, and that was our Zelda segment. Yep. Um, Aonuma showed up and was like, hey, guess what? It's Zelda time. Um, so I guess we can start from the beginning. Uh, the first thing they did show was the expansion pass trailer for Hyrule Warriors, which I'm personally very interested in. I love Age of Calamity. Um, we got new, a couple new weapons, including the Master Cycle, and we have a playable Guardian, which is really cool. Yeah, playable Guardian is such a fun idea. That is such a fun Hmm. idea. Yeah, Yeah, and there's other stuff in that DLC, which I think launches in a couple days that they didn't really talk about, but, like, there's a new difficulty mode, new enemies, new challenges, like... There's all kinds of stuff in there. I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious to see what we get as we go into the second part of that DLC, which appears more story-focused. But, um, yeah, some very cool stuff. And then, uh, quickly as well, you know, Skyward Sword HD is coming. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was, it is. Um, and then we have the first of two significant announcements. So, you know, there's been a lot of rumors about how they're going to celebrate the anniversary um, and Aonuma said, hey, we don't have anything else planned for this year, which is interesting. Um, interesting. And what they showed wasn't the rumor of Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess. No. It was a Zelda Game & Watch. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> now, this thing is super cool. I love um, it. I mean, I'm going to briefly it's say why. Um, so anyone who's familiar with the uh, Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch knows that had Mario 1, Mario Lost Levels, and Ball with Mario's head on it and interactive clock which is fine um you know again it was also fifty dollars um but and it did have some neat stuff like it, those games were not identical to the original versions they were like you know kind of like rom hack versions so you can like do some neat stuff in them and there's some neat easter eggs and stuff 
with the Zelda one though, they've they've really stepped it up in my opinion. Um, so not only in terms of the games where we have Zelda one, Zelda two, the original Game Boy version of Link's Awakening, which are both English versions and Japanese versions are playable, um, which is not something that the Mario Game and Watch had. And then on top of that, um, the clock is back, but is actually playable this time, which I love because it's like the Mario clock on DSi. I don't know if anyone else here played like with that like <laughs> I did. Not. I didn't play it, but I know of it. Yeah. So that that game is like it is a clock, but like the main point of that clock to me was the mini game where you are kind of auto running and you collect coins through different like levels that it generates, and it was just really fun to just kill time with. And I think in a handheld device like this, it's super cool to have that. Um, so there's an interactive clock with Zelda one that you can just kind of hop in and start killing enemies and stuff. And they Zelda two. Yep. So then they added a timer for Zelda two. And while that timer is going down, you fight an enemy gauntlet. Um, and it actually saves your high score for how many, how many enemies you kill. So and cool. it, I mean, it definitely, it seems to change locations and stuff, probably dependent on time or whatever, but there's even the dark link fight, like at playable on that little timer. <laughs> Like you have you have a life bar and crap at the bottom too, uh, and then they did include another game and watch game with Link's head, um, like the Super Mario Bros. one. I'm disappointed it isn't the Zelda game and watch, but at least the Zelda game and watch game is a dual screen one, so it makes sense that it wouldn't show up here. Yeah, it's like the it's it's vermin. Yes, it is vermin with Link's head. Um, <laughs> Just fine. You know, I I love game and watch games like like the regular game and watch games. You know, Vermin isn't one of my particular favorites. Um, I think there are many more that I would have preferred to see. Uh, but it's not a bad game. I think it's cool as a bonus. So this this thing has three full games and a fourth game on it and playable clock and playable timer mini games. Like, and it comes in really cool ass packaging. Like, what more can you ask for in a neat collectible? Like, it's 50 bucks. I, I think it's honestly a pretty good value. Um, yeah, better than definitely. the Mario one. Yeah, I mean um, it's got it's got uh, another game. Yeah, I mean it has another full game. Um, and Link's and, Awakening is just like, and and the I think when, when people playable, think of Zelda you know, nowadays, they definitely think of Link's Awakening more than they think of Zelda One or Two. Well, it's interesting too because, like as we all know, Link's Awakening has a full remake on Switch. Um, yeah, so for them to put that original version on there is very interesting. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's fun that it's not the DX version. Um, because, well, one, Link's Awakening Remake is based on DX. Um, you know, it has that colored dungeon and stuff. But the original game, uh, for people who are interested in speedrunning and stuff, those two games are very different. And if anyone is interested in, like, kind of checking out some of those weird buggy things that you can do in the original game that you can't do in the deluxe version, um, so long as that's kept intact, of course, um, you can do those here. And I think it's nice to see the original one honored here um because if i remember correctly correct me if i'm wrong 3ds virtual console did not have the original links awakening it only had dx no it only had dx yeah so this is the first yeah, time yeah, that, that we're sense. getting the original version we released basically ever wow. right that's impressive yeah. yeah i mean obviously it would be cool if the dx version was there too but um i'm cool with it being the original yeah i'll take um, this why it's, not it's funny i i didn't get the mario one but mm -hmm. now that this is out I want to get both of them. I yeah. see. I'm the opposite. I recently picked up a Mario one because I just I went to a GameStop and I just randomly saw it and I was like, why yeah. Not? And you now can I'm still like, get the Mario one. Now I'm like, why? I, did, I hope why this one is like that? that too, where it doesn't sell. Why, why did I buy that? Why did I just wait for the Zelda one? <laughs> yeah. Um. And I'll just say, just in terms of uh, the Game and Watch, one last thing here. Um, I have the Mario one. I really do enjoy the build quality on it it feels like a game and watch like if you got that replica um ball game and watch from years ago on uh, club nintendo um it's like that if you've played an original game and watch and you have an original game and watch system it does feel very similar to those except the d-pads better <laughs> for obvious reasons <laughs> how, how do they charge they are USB C. So USB -C. Yeah. Oh, wow. comes USB -C. With, yeah, yeah so it comes I think with nintendo's been smart about that lately just yeah yeah yeah, the the one thing that kind of stinks about the Game and Watches is they don't come with a power brick, 
but they do come mm. with a USB-C cable, and it is the okay. same cable that you use for the Pro Controller on Switch. So, Oh, awesome. I um, could use more of those. Yeah, and I was kind of asking around last night, like, how do you charge this thing? I don't want to, like, mess it up. And some people just plug <laughs> it in their Switch dock and charge it. So I'm like, all right, cool. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure there's more details to be shown on the Zelda thing because the Mario one had, like, little Easter eggs and stuff, too, like the dance, the drawing song or whatever. But um, really cool package. Um Honestly, I love that trend. Yeah, uh, I would love a Metroid so cool. Game and Watch. <laughs> yeah, um, give us a, give me like, a Donkey Kong one. That'd be great. Give, yeah, give me a, give me like Metroid like one, two, and like I don't know. You can come up with a mini game, I guess, or playable clock or whatever. Um, I'd be <laughs> very down for that. But anyway, uh, we all know the last thing that we have to talk about, yep. um, and and that is Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild two. Or as they say, sequel to the Legend of yeah, Zelda: the, Breath of the Wild. The sequel to the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, um, which the does title have a name, is, is announced. But it, yeah, it, they can't it, tell us it yet. They, yeah, they, they know it. it. They said on Numa Strips in an interview, "We know the title. We don't want to say it because it'll give away a key secret about the game that we don't want to talk about yet." Which is interesting. Which clearly means yep. that they have more tricks up their sleeve, right? That's exciting. Yep. Yeah. But so yeah. Do I, I, or do you want to? Uh, I was going to say. Yeah, go ahead. Just dive into it. Yeah, uh, so let, let's get into Breath of the Wild, shall we? Um, I will say, first of all, it was a teaser, right? Yes. If you, I think going in, we did our E3 prediction podcast, and we were like, this E3 is going to be the Breath of the Wild blowout, right? Yeah. I thought we would get an <laughs> Elden ring size trailer. Like, right. That Elden Ring trailer, that's what I wanted. That was our expectation for yeah. it, right? Uh, but no, no, it, it wasn't even playable at Treehouse, right? It was a teaser. Nope. They They labeled it a teaser. And it, and it was a teaser, right? It was about a minute and a half. Uh, and we got a glimpse of what the game is. We got a release date. I guess so we should talk about that. 2022, right? So, yep, 2022. Sorry, sorry if you were expecting lost, this year. I lost my yeah. bingo card. Sorry for your fantasy leagues. I, I, quite yeah. frankly, I don't even think we should expect it in March. I think for us, like, March was the latest. I don't think so anymore, right? I yeah. Think, I, I think this game is a little bit further off. That's okay. It seems further off, which is... Which is... It's still surprising. Like it's been in development for a very for long time. For a very long time, yeah. Um yeah. but in the teaser we saw uh well Link jumping off uh, <laughs> jumping down <laughs> I don't know from where, but in the sky, right? Uh parachuting yeah. from the battle bus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for Link real. dropping to his death. Uh where are we dropping? <laughs> and um and there's like floating islands like all over the place, right? Uh, Link yeah. looks wild as hell, right? His hair yeah. is untamed. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and and I think, and this is one thing that people guessed from the first teaser. Um, Link's arm is effed up. And with that yeah. has allowed for new gameplay, right? Uh, <laughs> he has like a Sheikah slate in his arm. Now. In his arm, yeah. yeah. And, and so we yeah. saw him do a flamethrower with that. We saw a very weird power yep. where he... How do you explain this one? Where he's going up yeah. through the water? He, he goes... He, yeah, yeah, so he's like a water, kind of becomes like a human water droplet, sort of. But he goes up through a surface and comes out the other end, almost like a twilight portal or something. Yeah, it's, I wonder how that'll work in the game. It like, is, I think like, that is so, so that you can use cool for yeah. navigation and exploration uh -huh. purposes. Um, that little that is, glimpse to me yeah. already told me, like, oh, gameplay-wise, we can expect some wacky ideas here, right? Like, this is going to yeah. be weird. Um yeah. And we also like, saw him use it as a flamethrower, like like yeah. there's a lot you, you can do push with a this block thing. backwards. Oh yeah, like, like, it like, wasn't like, like yeah. it wasn't it looked like stasis, but it wasn't stasis, right? It, it was, wasn't. Yeah, it was yeah. a rev like it was reversing the flow of time on that object. Yeah, it was so cool. Which seems yeah, to be also a theme, right? I didn't mm. totally understand what was going on in that segment. I thought it was just stasis until you until you mentioned that. That's interesting. Yeah, because yeah, because they, they showed it in different states. Right. I was kind of confused what was happening. So maybe it um, is like I'll, a Sands of Time type thing. I'll have think, to watch it again. I think there's some time elements here because also, I yeah. mean, it should be noted, they pulled their favorite trick. Uh, the trailer music <laughs> is the Breath of the Wild music, but reversed, right? Yeah. Oh, that's, I didn't even notice that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I clearly... Like, I think anyone who is concerned trolling about this game because it looks too samey, we don't know enough, right? If, if, you're, yeah. if, if you're out there being like, oh, well, this looks like the same game, this, it's just like when people said at E3 2016 that there's no talents in Breath of the Wild, right? Yeah. Uh, this was a so teaser. Like there's a lot of new mechanics in this game. There's new yeah. land masses, at least in the sky, and there might be caves too. We don't know. Yeah. 
And there yeah, might be more overworld stuff too. Like, yeah, we just well, it's don't interesting, know. right? So, so in the first know. trailer, it looked like we'd be going underground. And yeah. then this time they're like, actually, by actually, the way, you know, yeah. giant sky area. Yeah. And I know there was some concern about like, oh, you know, they're using the Hyrule from Breath of the Wild. Um, and I can understand that concern. I do think that it'll, it will be remixed and changed and, mm-hmm. and you know, also have the benefit of having this additional content that's that's in the sky yeah. or and possibly underground as well to help. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly was just digging the new abilities, the, particularly that water drop thing. Like the exploration mm-hmm. stuff is so interesting to me, and that sky area is so very interesting it, to me. Very, yeah, the sky yeah. area looks so cool. And they do like some things in that trailer that are so good for a sequel, like the stone talus lifting the base up, like out of the ground, like stuff that you know from the first game, but like kind of amped it's, up. Yeah, it, it surprises. It it, it surprises you in a way because it's not what you expected it to look like right um that that familiar yeah. thing i think um i am a little disappointed it's further off than i was than i was expecting but yeah i think um, and part of it is just blind faith but i feel like after breath of the wild they somewhat earned it right yeah um i, I i'm just kind of here for what the, the ride you know what, what wherever they take us um and i i am so excited to see more unfortunately i don't think it'll be a while do you yeah. guys expect to see this game before next E3? Sincerely, no, no, I don't. Unless care. it's shown, unless they show it in an early direct next year in some form. No. Like a I teaser. think next E3 but will I be don't like think, the yeah, that's E3 the proper yeah, yeah. I, 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 E3 I, is I yeah. E3 not the the you know, E3 E3 they yeah. love Zelda E3. You know, yeah, I mean uh, E3 yeah. Zelda is the E3 crowd pleaser for sure, like, which. Like just this game is gonna be massive. Like high rolls already huge. So imagine, yep. imagine they're gonna make some changes. Like I'm, I'm hoping for some changes on the ground. Yeah. But the ground plus the huge sky stuff, like it just, it's so cool. Like imagine there's like, like you can just jump off the sky place and you're in the world. Like yeah. how will this all work? There must be like a fast way to get up there too. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think one thing I would say about this is I was a little disappointed. Uh, in the trailer itself just because i felt like it just wasn't quite enough of, oh yeah i wanted so much more of I, a teaser. I definitely wanted more even from a teaser yeah. right i just wanted more. yeah but there is there is again there is enough glimpses to me that i'm like oh whoa like what right yeah. um, it was enough stuff to talk about it's yeah. definitely intriguing yeah um i do think a good part of the trailer like the trailer kind of has like this lull in the in the beginning and in the end where it's kind of like you know setting up or stuff then all of a sudden all this stuff happens <laughs> yeah it's just like, i was worried it was going to be all cinematic i was like oh yeah. no you can't give us a whole year of just a, another cinematic trailer i felt yeah i do feel like they should have shown even if it was just a little bit more like gameplay wise like even if it was just some gameplay in the sky or just some more with those powers that they that they showed like it felt show us little... some new location on the ground maybe um, it made it made some the like direct, temple or something the direct kind of ended uh on with a, a little note. less of a bang um, yeah because of how they they structured this i almost um, think this should have started and like metroid should have ended it yeah I, I don't know i mean i don't think it was a bad timing or, or whatever i just think it's the specific teaser itself i think that was <laughs> the issue i, I was um, i was not... I, I think we were all just hoping for more but again if, if the yeah, game is yeah. further off than we were expecting I, it's understandable yeah um yeah i i, I um, think like there there it's weird i think this is kind of the perfect trailer to um it, it is both like if you're a hardcore defender of breath of the wild you will defend this trailer right you, you'll you'll say you yeah. had a good time whatever but then there's also just enough of like uh it's very easy to concern troll with this trailer Right. Yeah. I, I yep. think that um, I I really think that that th- this trailer is like, hey, look, I didn't see this or I didn't see that. Like, is it really all that different? Uh, you know. I feel. Uh, yeah. I I kind of feel. I think what I feel about this trailer. I think just to sum it up in a way, and maybe you guys will agree, maybe you won't. Um, it kind of feels like a teaser that we should have seen last year, if that yeah. makes sense. Like. Yeah, I get that. If we were getting another teaser, I feel like this would have been a good teaser for last year, um, but you know at the same time this trailer also has like link as like cyborg tarzan so like i mean <laughs> <laughs> is this is this the longest development cycle for a zelda game 
It honestly is, yeah, because is the, the previous it's amazing because it's a sequel. the The previous record holder is Breath of the Wild, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now yeah. I have to imagine, like you know, this is completely speculation with no basis, right? Um, I wonder how early they were planning because I don't think twenty twenty two was the initial plan, right? No, and, I and, think COVID made that happen, and COVID was a big wrench in that. Um, I. It just makes sense that an open world game was the one that got fucked most by COVID, right? Yeah. B- because it's, yeah. it is the, the game with the biggest scale, the most people working on it. So that's going to get the yeah. most so much disrupted. Testing. Yeah. The, that, that's yeah. the one that's going to get most disrupted easily, right? Um, yeah. But I, I wonder, like, t- I guess, it, does this make sense? Like, my internal timeline of this is, like, I think they wanted it out, like, fiscal year 2020, like, March 2021. And then yep. your typical Zelda delay happened, right? Where where they right. they they always have too many ideas. They always you know go overboard, and, and so that <laughs> it, it got pushed later into twenty twenty one, and then I think ultimately COVID is what pushed it into next year. You know, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I, I I I I feel similarly, in terms of like my idea of how that played out. Um, you know, one thing. That's interesting. I, I was talking to a friend about about this all last night, um, and uh, one thing they, they said to me I thought was very interesting in terms of the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, um, they weren't really too into what they saw, and the reason I thought was very interesting, and that's, that is, um, I think he, he, I believe this is exactly what he said, which was, in Zelda, you are a guy with a sword, and, you know, and cut, that's that, and then everything else, you're like, you're dealing with everything else. In this, Link kind of has all these weird, almost, like, almost superpowers. Um, now, personally, I dig this. I, I dig oh. this a lot. Um, but I thought it was an interesting perspective, um, and I thought it was worth mentioning, just because I'm curious if there are other people out there who feel that way, that the simplicity that a Link's, like, moves and typical move set um lend itself it is it is a Zelda. huge departure i mean like the items yeah. used to do everything and yeah i mean to an extent i do miss the items though yeah. i also think like the sheikah slate and this arm sheikah slate are very interesting and yeah i mean i they, personally they prefer work. this cool. format but a lot of people do dig the old format well, i think it's interesting because he said that it kind of felt like metroid to him because of the power these powers that you're getting that you you know in breath of the wild one you get them all the beginning right yeah Uh, for the most part and then in this i'm guessing you'll probably get them early on and you know they inform how you travel through this world i I think it's a bit different because in metroid you're getting these powers as you go through the game Mm -hmm. and then it lets you kind of backtrack to previous places and the in this i feel like the powers you get you know you're getting these powers and they 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 inform the exploration that you're doing and allow you to do all these wild things and i feel that exploration is the center and the heart of, of Zelda. So, you know, Breath of the Wild 1 is, to me, a 3D Zelda 1, and Breath of the Wild 2 looks like it's continuing that. So, I, I I'm just curious what your guys' thoughts I, no, were No, I'm, I'm kind of all for just being... Just go crazy with this one, you know? Yeah. Do yeah. things I, that... I want them to go bonkers with the power-ups. I really do, too, you know? Like, like again, this is a world that we already know, Right. So I yep. I want them to just go all out with just all sorts of crazy ideas, and this trailer yeah. did a good job of already teasing that for me. You know, so that, I'm, I want yeah. a way to swing around more. Give me give me give me some yeah. like hook I, shot equivalents. Make me Spider Man. Yeah, I, I mean mobility I think that's is the big point. thing, right? I want more mm-hmm. mobility options. I think yeah. that would just yeah. be fun. Well, I think it's interesting. Give me a motorcycle from the start. Now oh, yeah. the thing with this is that it's not the first game in this set this is now a direct sequel and it has that world from the first one so it makes sense that you know to make that content interesting or more interesting that you might have different powers that let you navigate it in a different way um it makes sense for a sequel to have that so that you can't you can't rely on the same crutches used in the first one you can't yeah maybe maybe use stasis for everything and then now you don't have stasis now you have something else so you have to change your tactics yeah I think it'll help make it feel like a very differentiated sequel on top of all the like, you know, stuff going on in the sky and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, ultimately, I mean, how did we feel about this direct in general? 
loved it. Amazing. Loved it. Awesome. Like, yeah. like it was, I, in my one, opinion, one of the best. it was the best E3 direct of the Switch era, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Just a lot of really unexpected announcements, most of them coming out this year, all of them looking great, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I think more than anything, what I look for in a direct, besides the announcements, is what's the next couple months going to look like? And the next couple yep. months on the Switch just look great. You know, they do. Yeah, they, they started the presentation by saying, hey, we hope that you can find a game in here that you like. Yeah. And I think that's very important because a lot of people, the way they look at these presentations are, you know, if everything or nearly everything in this presentation isn't for me specifically, then it was a wash. Yeah. And I think that's very silly. Um, certainly no one who watches these presentations are going to find literally every game in them for them. Right. Um, and I think something that Nintendo does very well um, and, you know, really shows time and time again, and it did in this direct is the variety of games that they have coming so maybe you don't care about Mario Golf or Mario Party. Maybe you dig adventure games. Well, you have Breath of the Wild 2 looming in the distance, and you've got, you know, Metroid. Um, maybe you dig RPGs, so Shin Megami Tensei and that other cool Ast Astria Landing, I think it was called. Those might be appealing to you. But you don't like, you know, action games, so Metroid's not your thing. Um, I think it's very silly for people to get very uppity about how every game has to appeal to them. Um, yeah. I think this Direct really nailed that, like, the variety of games. I mean, that's kind of the Switch story, is the platform has so much, so many different games and so much variety on it that there is something out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. They're truly, like, like the, the, the Switch has one of the most diverse outputs um, that we've ever seen from a Nintendo system, if not any system, right? Um, yeah. It, it, there truly is something for everything, for everyone, and I think... Nintendo as a software publisher themselves, right? Like, yeah. Advance Wars, WarioWare, Metroid, Zelda, uh, I forgot, Mario Party, these are all games that hit different people, you know? I would say yeah. all of them, personally. But, <laughs> yeah. but you know, uh, th these are all games that, like, I I would be shocked if not if at least one of these games didn't make you go, oh, yeah, I want that, you know? Um, yeah. If yeah. someone told me not they didn't want to play any of the games in the direct, I would I would like, I would be very surprised. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I would not understand. I just wouldn't because the, yeah. you know I I think and, and I think this direct did just it did a great job of reminding me why I love Nintendo. You know, B yeah, because these are friends. You forget the breadth of the franchises that they have. You know, like yeah. like yeah, like like they have. Over the course of 35, 40 years, right, they have just made so many different franchises. And every one of their franchises has a pocket of, like, fan, just enormous fans, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's nice to see, beyond the big stuff that we always get, it's nice to see these franchises yeah. that just have been neglected for so long, you know? Yeah, the the end, like, and this isn't the end of the Switch life cycle, but, like, these, like, later cycle times are often when we get really exciting games if you listen to last week's podcast yeah. two of the games that i highlighted as my favorite like gba games were were zelda or not not zelda sorry were metroid zero mission and warrior twisted and i yeah. think i also mentioned advance wars as well but to have all three of those <laughs> here yeah like, three huge yeah. like games like that i love from that generation getting new entries is just such a special feeling and this was a great e3 i think it's worth mentioning you know a few years ago when the switch light came out and stuff like clubhouse started showing up they kind mm -hmm. of talked about how they were looking at ip that were traditionally handheld mm -hmm. and i think we're very much seeing the fruits of that that labor where yeah you know yeah. The, the generation kind of began with a lot of more like big scale like console yeah. kind of stuff that, that, that first in, year we had everything yeah, everything, everything yeah. felt like and this then, big like yeah yeah and then now at this point instead of there being nothing because sometimes you know 
console cycles for Nintendo, kind Nintendo. Of stop yeah. suddenly. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> what ends up happening instead is that a lot of the smaller series, a lot of the handheld stuff that would traditionally be handheld, like Advance Wars, um, like, you know, WarioWare has Warrior. had console entries, but those games are known mostly for their handheld entries. And 2D Metroid at this stage is associated with handheld, you know, yeah. gaming. There hasn't um, been a, a console 2D Metroid since the SNES. Yeah. So, yeah. Think, so yeah. like, yeah. So, like, you know, and and in this and 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 in on the same system, Metroid Prime Four is coming, which mm-hmm. they mentioned. Right. Probably should mention that. I, I, you know, I like, mean, I think that's the fascinating part is because you know, like, like you know, it's funny because Warrior and Metroid did show up on the 3DS so late, though, right? But it was so late after the next system had come out and where where mm-hmm. things had started petering out that I don't blame people for skipping those entries. Right? Yeah, I skipped yeah. Sam. I skipped Sam's Returns, and I'd really like and, to play it still. And you love Metroid, would, right? Um, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. recommend but, it. But here's the thing, though, like with Metroid Dread, with WarioWare, get it together. Like it, these games are coming, even though they're late in the generation. The Switch isn't going anywhere. The Switch is still exciting, no. and it's getting those big tentpole releases that keep you interested, right? So it, yeah. it's yeah. having that healthy mix. You know, where yeah. it's like for people that love the huge games, they you, still they're still getting Breath of the Wild too. They're still getting Metroid, Metroid Prime. Like there's there's yeah. huge games coming. You as have well huge as amazing full releases, stuff. yeah. But but then we you... are we are in year five mm-hmm. of Switch life cycle, and it feels like we're in year three. Or year it, two, it truly feels like we're, we're not even close to done. You know yeah. Th- that this system has so much. I hope life they just keep it going. That. Like I yeah I don't. I don't think we need a new generation for a while. I just don't yeah. think it's necessary at all. The the games and the studios and just everything is kind of coming together. That 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 long hoped for. Oh, this is the power when you merge Nintendo's handheld and console it's, output together. That's what we've been waiting for. It's here. Yeah, like the same system that you have Xenoblade Two, Breath of the Wild, and like Mario Odyssey on. You have. Um, you know, WarioWare and 2D Metroid and, and like Advance Wars and, yeah. and Clubhouse yeah. games and you know and Ring Fit and like you know like all this stuff is kind of coming together. So that's yeah. my big takeaway. I was um, thinking for a while, like in year like two, I was like, where are like the handheld games? Like, yeah. what what happened to this being like a hybrid system? And it's yeah. here now. They're here in full yeah. force. They are here in yeah. full force. So, and that makes me more excited for the future because now that that stuff is coming, we'll probably see more of a, a better mix and flow of it, um, mm-hmm. you know, than we necessarily did at the beginning where it was more of the bigger experiences. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, um, I guess one last quick thing. Uh, we saw a lot of E3. Um, who? What was your favorite out of everything E3 this time? Like, what were your favorite conferences? I mean, to be honest, okay. it was Nintendo. I, like, I think yeah. I, I just thought the direct was the best. I, I, Xbox was great too. Don't get me wrong. Um, Xbox yeah. was really good it, too. It was Nintendo and Xbox for me. Definitely, yeah. Nintendo yeah. definitely led the pack. They had WarioWare, which was just like, yeah, amazing. It uh, was, and, and like Mario Party was really one of my favorite announcements. I would never yeah, have expected same. that. Yeah, and um, like, but yeah, the, and then Xbox did a fantastic show as well. Um, I yeah, play a lot of those titles too. Yeah, for me, definitely Nintendo was top as usual. I mean, that's just my the type of yeah. games that I like come from them. But I also thought the indies did a great job. I know we briefly mm-hmm. touched on them at the beginning, um, but there was a lot of great indie content coming. I definitely recommend if you have not checked out stuff like the Wholesome Direct, um, the Future Games Show, um, you know, Day those of the sorts devs. of things. Yeah, Day of the Devs was great too. Mm-hmm. Um, go take a look back on yeah. those. Um, there, we, we could have done a whole show just on just the on indies. those. Yeah, there, yeah, honestly. Yeah. There's, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Um, you know, there were some companies that didn't have great showings or great com- Square. You know, conferences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Square, Capcom, and, you know, Namco. Um, you know, and that happens. That just, that's just the nature of E3. Um, and I think sometimes it's difficult because some of these companies don't have as much variety as you're kind of hoping for yeah um like i dug nintendo and indies um and i thought the xbox conference was good but just was a little too much cg and a little too little variety but they had plenty of stuff there like it was more variety than xbox typically has um it was I feel just like well-paced. square and capcom yeah. could have just put their games somewhere else yeah honestly. yeah yeah put them in it, someone else's yeah. show but but you, you know. know what i we needed that squ- square i'm happy happened because it gave us the the, the biggest meme of e3 you know <laughs> uh and the you chaos know, meme chaos you know, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even with the jokes about that game, I've had a few friends play the demo and they're like, you know, the combat in this is pretty fun. Like this game is pretty fun. So I'm, I, you know, E3 is not only about, you know, the games themselves, but it's also kind of the initial impressions and showing in the games. And sometimes that goes wrong. Like Nintendo's done it plenty of times. Yeah. But I think the trailers did those games really dirty. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in playing that demo too, to actually reevaluate because yeah, bad trailer yeah. but could be a good game same with babylon's fall that was a very bad trailer but could be a very yeah. fun game so like i don't want to I judge think, it based off that i think the final message i just want to give everybody listening is that you know we see all kinds of games at e3 big small you know dumb trailers cg trailers teasers full gameplay like and, and you know it's rough and people have their um preferences in terms of what they you know what they want to see at a reveal um, and I would just like to ask everybody, like, if, you know, go back through the E3 stuff that, that happened, look at some of those deeper dives in some of those trailers that maybe you missed, or maybe, maybe you just kind of discounted, um, you know, E3 is supposed to be a celebration of video games. And sometimes I think we forget that online because, you know, sometimes we can just be so heated or, you know, you feel like our time is being wasted with a presentation or, you know, what's going on. And for me, I think E3 and video games are supposed to be a very positive thing. Um, so if you did miss stuff from E3, if you missed some conferences, or if you just want to look at games and trailers, please do it. Please take a look at some of that stuff. I think you'll find something that you'll like um, if you if you, if you you keep diving in there and stuff that you didn't even know happened, you know? Um, so uh, with that, um, this is it for our, our E3 wrap-up um yeah thank you, thank you guys. guys so much yeah thank you guys for for joining me today on this one we had a lot to talk about so this episode is very long uh it won't all be this say, long <laughs> yeah. so yeah uh i will quickly say um you can you can find us on uh, nintendoera.wordpress.com that is our community blog um been a little bit content light lately but we will we will get there um and you can listen to us um on youtube and all your favorite podcast platforms like anchor and spotify and all that fun stuff um we will be uh, we will be back here next week with another episode uh so thank you again for listening and for being here and uh yeah that's gonna be it from us thank you guys peace